So I'd like to talk about um, disaster risks, prevention, and local community cities. Uh, our office, the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, we are uh, mandated to be the custodian of what is called the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015-2030, which is one of the um, Agenda 2030 agreements. And in there, because local cities are the ones who bear the brunt of disasters, uh, they have a specific role in the prevention and reducing disaster risk and not to uh, create new ones. And as part of this uh, work, we have a campaign called Making Cities Resilient Campaign, which we run with the UN Habitat. This is, has been going on from 2010. And as part of it, uh, we have an EU-funded uh, project uh, which um, has selected 20 cities globally, five from Africa, where we have a detailed um, plan of helping them make themselves resilient. And today I wanted to talk, you, talk to you about one specific city in uh, Kenya, which is called Kisumu, which I visited yesterday, which is part of this. And um, they've been doing really great work with the community. So I thought it was um, the best um, way to explain to you what it means for these um, cities. So I went there yesterday, got up at 4.30 and got a suntan. You can see my nose is burned, not because I was on the beach, but uh, I was uh, going around sites in Kisumu. Kisumu is the third largest city in Kenya. And um, there is a really vibrant... Um, uh, situation there under a very strong political leadership of the city manager, a lady, of course. Uh, her name is uh, Doris Ombara. And um, she went to the Sendai uh, conference in 2015, and that made her think, right, I'm going to mainstream disaster risk reduction, prevention, and everything I'm going to do. And this is actually what she's doing. So what is she doing? Um, she took us to uh, this bridge, uh, which is called the Kakoth Bridge. Um, there is no water. There was no water when we went there. But because the de deforestation of the hills is so severe, once the rainy season comes, the water starts flowing and it cuts out the edge of the city, which is almost a rural part, and then the people can't come to the center of the city. Children can't go to school. Women can't take their produce to the market. And this was a big issue because for months it was flooded, right? So she, uh, she built this bridge uh, before the rainy season of this year. And we went there to the bridge and the community was there. There were women, there were elderly, there were children. There was even a people living with disability. And they all told, told us about the before and after. And we felt that there was a very, very strong connection between the leadership and the, and the community because they were talking very, very um, easily, freely to the mayor, um, telling her, yes, we like this very much, but you have to do more. You have to um, um, dig uh, the, the soil a bit more because um, the uh, soil is coming up too much, there's accumulation, so it's not enough to just create the bridge. Um, and she was saying, well, let's see, we have to find funds, but we'll do this, right? So this is a community requesting the mayor, a mayor willing to listen to the community. The next place she took us was this site, which was an eight hectare dump site in the middle of the city. And now half of it has been converted into a green park. Now this was just not one dump site, it was getting so high that at one point, if you, climb, if you climb to the top of it, you could see Lake Victoria from there. And the dump that was there was not ordinary dump only. It was hospital waste. It was um, batteries, um, sometimes even dead bodies. Um, and there were 200 families living there um, because they were scavenging and they were, that was their livelihood. But she decided that she needs to talk with the people living there um, find a different uh, way of uh, livelihood for, for them, and then convert it, uh, take the waste out to a different place, but not just doing it like that. She had an environment um, a survey done, um, and she chose a place which would result not in just putting one risk to another, but making sure that she's not creating new risk. 
And there's only one more hectare uh, to be um, done, and then it's next to a football, a big football stadium. Until then, they couldn't have international matches because the odor that came from it was so severe that international matches would not come. But now it seems that they would be able to do it. So it has a cascading effect of made, making the city very um, uh, resilient. And, but she didn't stop there. She said, OK, I have to go to, down to the cause of this issue about waste. So she um, introduced using the scorecard of our Making City Resilient campaign. And she formed a group of 10 households. And the 10 households have to make sure that all the families in the household are all separating waste um, and recycling what they can, burying um, in their own garden what they can, so that the waste amount will be as small as possible. Um, and through all this, we really felt that Kisumu is really a shining example of the Making City Resilient campaign. And as again, I tell you, it's a, it's a combination of strong political leadership, but with the community trusting that leadership and making requests to it. Um, so that's the story I wanted to tell you, and I think um, it's, uh, it was very... Um, I went there because I wanted to... I had a lot from, about them, but I wanted to see with my eyes, and what I saw was more than what I expected. Thank you.